Hello and good afternoon. This interview is coming straight from Kingston, Jamaica, Trenchtown. We're calling for Black QTV. Hello, good afternoon. Good Could afternoon. you please state your name, please? My name is Otis Hines. Otis Hines. Otis is, Hines. Is, um, do you have an alias? Well, everybody that knows me call me Burrow. Burrow? Burrow. Why they call you Burrow? Well, it's a stigma, you know. You grow up. And you know, we, you, you, you're in the trench town. It's a, it, it would be like a tradition. Everybody has a nickname. Nobody can call you by your birth certified name, except it's like your parents are, you, 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 you know, who is around you, your neighbors and so forth. You are going to get a name, especially when you're a boy, a nickname. So how but, did you get the name? Well, I guess it was from character, you know, Boro. I grew up to find out that El Burro means donkey. And maybe it's because my nose looks like a donkey nose, you know? So I guess that's where I got the name from. And I love football and, you know, I have a, a, a physical presence, you know? Love is in my heart, but I always have a little physical presence since I was a boy growing up. So Burro fit me, you know? I never see any problem with it. Not that you're going to have a problem, because if you do have a problem with a nickname, then people gonna tease you with it, you know, we are growing yes. up as little boys and so yes. forth. But Buru was okay with me. Mm. Suit me fine, you know. Okay. Still has it. Okay, so tell me, where did you grow up? Right here. Just meters away from where we're doing this interview. We are at Fifth Street at the studio, Trenchtown Studio. We are at Fifth Street, Trenchtown Studio, this piece and quiet right here. And I just live right down the road, just by Carl Smith Drive there right by Boystone. So, maintaining-wise, how did you grow up? How did you grow, how was it like growing up? Well, growing up different places in Jamaica constitute different growing, you know what I mean? Depending on where you was born and raised. See, right here, you know, they call you the ghetto. They call you the, the badlands, as it is when it comes to, it's a, it's, a, it's a male syndrome, you know? I, I figure, as soon as I had a little common sense, I figured that when a lady bears a son, it must be a problem to her because, you know, growing up here and being here and born here because of the violence and, you know, I won't say political, you know, because sometimes it's not political because it's not all the time the politics get into it. Sometimes it's amongst the neighbors, amongst people who live less than 200 meters from you. You know what I mean? It, it, so that's why I say it's like it's a, it's a male stigma. You know, it's against a male. Here it is, a lady has a son, and the first thing I know, she's sitting there at Jubilee and she's saying to herself, how long this her son going to live? You know, she don't really have the access to send him out there or get him somewhere else to go or raise him to go here. And, you know, I have, I have good reasons, very good reasons for saying this. You know what I mean? Because it seems if you get to... 30 years old in my era. I was born in 1971. And if you got to 2001 and you didn't die or migrated, because migrating, leaving the country and going somewhere else is seen as an opportunity. But if that did not happen and you didn't end up in prison, well, you must be dead at 30. In Jamaica? In Jamaica, right here where I was born and raised, right around me. This, you know, right here is segregated. There's a trench town, but... You have Rima, you have Jungle going north, you have Denham Town going back south, you have Lizard Town by the marketplace. It, it, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a range. You have East, you, you have Maxfield Avenue, you have Walton Park, you have Rose Town. It, it's, it's, it's like you, you grew up with this, this segregative thought of this is where you're from, this is where you're at, this is who you is, this is who you represent. You, you, you understand me and the next thing you know, ignorance have a lot to do with it also, you know. Okay. Because of what people don't know. Because here it is, you was born and raised into certain things, grew up listening, and this is what you gather. It's not like you probably think for yourself. No, you didn't get that chance, you just follow suit. You know, mom and dad is this, uncle is this, brother is this, so I'm this. And the basics of that and growing up into it, you figure it's like, it's like forestry but with animals. This is your mother, 
This is your tribe. This is where you're going to stay in the tree. It seems like sometimes I'm wondering, it's human nature. Mm -hmm. But it's yeah. not good for us. Because when I look into it, we're dying and we're dying without living. Living meaning the, the, the fullness of life, the joy of life. It's certain things cut out from us. We, we don't get it. You don't get that enjoyment. You don't get that, that, that. We're talking about life. You know, here it is now. You're watching the TV, you're watching the cable. This is where you're prone to. It's not really happening around you. You, you get drawn to something else because you, you're yearning for something that, that doesn't exist here. It's not here. You know? It, all right. Somebody leave here and go to America, whether legally or illegally, and they come back here. When you see this person, nine out of ten when this person come back, if they don't die, and I, I don't, it's not a lot that go away and die. But when they return, they are seen as like icons. You know, they look different, they think different, they look at like, if, if, all right, they went away and they probably was a war boat and they come back here and they are a Christian. Okay. And, and they're telling you things you can't believe and you're like, who is this? But it, and Mr. John, this was just, we did a ray, 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 and we just him gone a foreign and ray, 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 and thing. And but, 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 the next time you see Mr. John, you can't believe, says Mr. John. Because Mr. John now act how you expect him to act. Because this is how you know him to act. Him now speak the way you expect him to speak. Everything has changed. And physicalness change. So what change it? So here it is. This is evidence that your, your environment determines who you become. Who you become, yes. And that might not be a fact. You know why I say that, not, that, that might, not, might not be a fact? Explain it. I personally know people within this space that have been here so long and I didn't even know them. I never met them on the street. I never see them in the clubs. I never see them at the dances. I never see them at the ball games. I never see them going to school, back to work. I never see them in community events. I don't know these people. As a matter of fact, just the other day, I didn't even know that a little girl was living so close to me that passed a campion. Because I'm a whole Mary. What is campion? Campion. Campion College. Okay. Top school in Jamaica. Okay. I went to Woolmers. Boys. Top school in Jamaica. Okay. Class uh, 87. Passed my common entrance right down the road where I'm telling you. Right in Denham Town from St. Albans Primary. So you got all your subjects and everything regardless. Oh, Lord. I, I left Woolmers at 16. And didn't even repeat. Mm -hmm. I started working at the Jamaica when I was 18. 18 years 18 old? 18 years old. I'm going to tell you something. And I have people to prove it. I was working at Air Jamaica. I came in Air Jamaica to Heart Human Employment and Resource Training in 1989. When I went through Heart, and Heart looked at my thing and said, But we can't send it to training. This is Heart in, in England? Where is it? The human Employment and Resource Training. It's the, 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 um, the thing they have in right down the Art Foundation in okay, Jamaica, the okay. Training Institute. Okay. They are the ones that train you, certified you, and send you overseas. I think okay. it was founded by um, a late Prime Minister, Mr. Edward Siaga. Okay. I think, yeah, but I went to heart at 18, just after Gilbert, in 1987. Gilbert Blue, 1988, 18, 18, September 18. the 12th. Yes. And I got my yes, job. I remember with, that, I remember that. And I got my job, I think it was either June or July, in 1989, the youngest employee ever in Air Jamaica's history. And that's you. And that's me. You're looking at him. Otis Hines, Otis Valentine St. Arbin Hines. Everybody knows me here as Borough. And there's people out there that's going to get exposed to this that knows me also. Okay. Right? And I remember working in Air Jamaica at 18, getting the training and everything. They even took me off heart and put me on a, a special contract. So when I got the special contract, I remember my manager, a beautiful lady, Miss Merlene Hamilton. That lady, she probably responds to me. I spent three months in cargo, Air Jamaica cargo at the airport, and they sent me to Arbor Street at the, um, the finance section. And here it is, I become 
a professional ticketing was my world. World fairs, knowing the airline, knowing the industry, learning, I was excited. I remember I used to leave my section where I used to sit down and walk around the next side of the building just to look across to Palisades Airport and see the planes landing and leaving. I used to love the sight. Just sitting there on the seventh floor and the sixth floor and looking through the window and saying to myself, Otis, are you really old on this job here? At 20, uh, well, how oh, I got the permanency still is a different scenario. Honestly, I got, I had the experience and everything. I was, you know, I was getting a little certification and so forth inside, mm -hmm. you know, on the job training and all of this. So mm -hmm. I felt I have enough. So I decided there was an ad in the paper for um, this airline, BWYA, Trinidad Base. And the ad was, you needed two years experience and your experience with ticketing. And I, that was me, like the job was set for me. I remember Waiting I, for you. It, it was set for me because everything that these people wanted was me. Yes. You understand? So, I mean, subjects and everything. So I decided, okay, let me apply for this because, you know, at the time I got my first child in March 1991, my daughter. And things went bad with me and her mom. Her mom ditched her at three months. So I became single parenting. Me, my mother, she passed. My sister, she passed. They became the aunts and my grandma became my first daughter's mom. Okay. And I decided to myself, I go have to do everything in my power to make it for this little girl. Currently, I can't tell you her name. Her name is Yannick Hines. She's in um, Fort Myers right now. Married and everything, you know what I mean, circled down. I think she have her master's in nursing. And if you hear the story, I had to give her up to my elder sister. To get really looked after? To make sure that she was all right. Okay. Owing that I was on the, the loose. I, I, I couldn't be there for her here and then. So when I got her visa, she was 11 months old because I know you wonder how she went there. Yes. I got my visa also that year. Yeah, so, you, I, so yeah, because so you've I, traveled before as well. Of course, I, I, I back and forth when you get a vacation and so forth. But I'm telling you now about the job, BWIA. When I mm -hmm. applied for the job and went on the interview, there were eight persons there that I sat in the building and worked with, and nobody told me about it until when I went to the interview. So right there and then I found out that we're not living right, and I'm saying to myself, I'm going to get this job. You know? Okay, let me, let me ask you something. When you was accepted for this job, was yeah. you doing any badness? Were you involved in any badness no, before? No, I stayed away from the badness. But when you're going to say badness, you know, and violence, you know, it's all around you. So me, at what point did you start the badness? At what point did you stage, would you say... Um, badness was... I, I, I don't want to say it was in us. Because if it's in you, then it's going to be you. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. It was in us, but I'm surrounded by it. It's everywhere. It's my friend. Me and your friend. You're my neighbor. I know what you're doing. I know what you're doing. But it's not, not my business. You're responsible for you. I am responsible for me. Here it is now because you know me. You're probably my... You're not going to bring the badness to me. Because of how I live with you. You have to know how to live in here. Mm -hmm. You have to know how to live. Even if you are bad yourself. The place has a way of giving you up. I always say to myself, you know, then why is it as a male stigma you're going to get up and say badness? Why, why, why you want for the badness? All right. Your neighbor know you're bad. Your girl know you're bad. What this does for you? Because in this place, and you know, all it comes to you know, is a moment of time. It seems like this is the joy in it. You get killed. It's a big party and a big funeral. And, and nothing accomplished. Nothing done. If it's all about your girl, somebody else going to get her. If it's about your child, here it is now, then we come step to somebody. Or you just kick them out to, to, to society to become whatever. I've been here and seen three generations fall to badness, to gun. We, well, let me ask you something. Are you, would you say that you are done, a defender? How would you describe yourself? I would describe myself as a realist. As a realist? I'm just a realist. There might be bad men out there that don't like me and probably wanted to hurt me, but because of the path, the journey that I chose and probably didn't get a chance, 
Okay. Because not only was I working, I probably was never home. Are you feared? Who, me? Are you feared? No. You're not feared by anyone? No, by no one. No elders, no young one, no babies. Never. Ever. So, so how does how does the people in your area look at you as an individual? They're going to look at me. This is where they look at me now. They look at me as, because I know this when I was a young boy. The day I pass my common entrance, everybody look at me that I'm going to be the one. And don't think they're going to, not being the one in being the prime minister whatsoever, being the one as far as the food, basically, in plain Jamaican terms. So, plain, so, so by gaining the food. To gain your respect, <laughs> you're doing constructive things to gain your respect. Exactly. That you got. Pass okay. my common entrance, you have to hold up here, no matter what you're doing, because you know I'm going to beat you and whatsoever, and if neighbors come and complain about you, you're going to get it. But I had to go to school, sometime without anything. Sell buckles in high school. Save up my money for go a carry. My mom could make and uh, um, afford it. My mother, she sell little cheese chips and biscuit. My father is a carpenter and get little roast here and there. Oh, speaking of your father, um, being a realist, what did you, what, when you were born, what did you come to see your father and mother doing? The, 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 um, married, being together, they are elderly people now. Settling down, have a big family. He had, my father had about five sons that he didn't have with my mom. And then I was his sixth. My little sister that passed away was his first daughter. And my little brother, he's in New York. How many brothers and sisters you got in total? Ah, uh, when I was born, there was 11 out there. 11? Yes, my father had five on his side and my mother had six on her side. So I had two sisters by my mom's side and four brothers. One it's of them I still really haven't met. a big family. Yeah, one of them I still haven't met. In and everybody is still alive and well? No. That's the, that's the sad part. My mom passed. My dad passed. My little sister, she's two and a half years younger than me, passed. She, they, they all passed in New York. I didn't even get to, the, to go to the funeral or none of that. You know what I mean? It, okay. it, it's, it's a long story. That must have been quite sad for you. Yeah, real sad because I had to do it on my own, you know? Oh. They all passed. My other elder brother that passed to um, skin cancer in 2002, I think he passed. You know, and I, I couldn't make it there either. So I'm saying to myself, damn, they all passed and I wasn't there. Even though, even if I couldn't make any difference, you know, it, it hurts. You know, I know being there probably couldn't do anything. And you know, you beat up on yourself more time. Like probably if I was there, you know, if this did not now, if this did not now, I would have been there. You know, it's circumstances, you know. Mm -hmm. And I should have been there. I should have been there, you know. Where were you, you know, when this was happening, you know? I take the bumps and the bruises and whatsoever everybody think because I still said to myself, you should have been there. It was destined for you to be there in, in their demise, you know, in, in, when they're leaving. And, you know, probably that's why I lost so much weight and all of that. And well, you was bigger before. I was way a big man. When I remember at one time I was weighing 190 pounds. You was doing weights? Was you going to the gym? What's yeah, the situation? Doing a lot of that. Exercise and all that. I play football, you know. I play football, I play cricket, anything that name play. So through it all, you, see, you, got, you had your talent? Yes, man. You know what I mean? Okay. I played for Air Jamaica. I did a little stint for Ulmers. I played all primary. I played like a community league. You know, even now, you give me a ball right now, I just kick it until it, like it went burst. You know, I, I like mm -hmm. keeping up. You know, Carl Brown, he used to live right down there. You know, you're wrong. Who, who is Carl Brown? Carl Brown is former national coach. Yes. Yeah, his kids. Born and raised right around me. From, an, from a national coach in Jamaica? Yes, okay. national coach in Jamaica. Carl Brown, Boystown coach, okay. Boystown farmer coach. Now we're in the rebuilding process of Trenchtown and Boystown itself. I want to be a part of this. You okay. know, you, you know, it's not that me a fight to find where I fit in or what I should do. You know, I just yeah. want to know that whatever I'm doing, I want it to be positive. It must be among some positiveness and to save some lives. I'm tired of seeing people die and die in some ridiculous way. Dying for some things where you don't even believe. Did, you, did, you, did your mother and your father have a reputation before, um, before you came into the, um, the world? Did they have a reputation like a donor or anything like that? <laughs> My mother, oh God, poor lady. She came from St. Dan. I, I used to talk about Bohemia St. Dan and Spalding sent down, that's probably the market. 
Where she met my father who gave her St. Mary, I don't know. But they met. And it's nature. She left the country, he left the country, and this is where it began. And okay. I was the first offspring for both of them. You were the first one? I was the first one for both of them together. So would you say you're the bad apple in the family? They, they or? already had kids out there. And okay. I mean, both sides, I, I got to know both sides because my father got kids out there. I got to know them. Mm -hmm. My mom have kids. I grew with them. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And it, 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 it was crazy. But here it is. I'm the one that joined both families. Okay. Because my elder brother, our elder sister, by either side, don't have as much brothers and sisters as me. You understand uh, what I'm saying? Yeah, I understand that 100%. Yeah. But tell me something. We, we, okay, with so much brothers and sisters, right? I'll take it. You have a lot of um, had a lot of friends as well. Yeah. Were you easily influenced? No. Never. If I was easily influenced, I'd be dead. I would be dead. Look, there were men that are dead, and we can't talk. We don't even have to call any names. There are men that I've lived with, even off the island, overseas. Men that I grew with. And I know men that the system probably don't know. I'm telling you, within myself, I know. It's like you're being a hypocrite, but you don't really want to be a hypocrite. So you do think because being bad is easy. It was easy. It wasn't bad. I'm not talking about killing someone. Never did. Didn't have to. Would you say it's easy to be cruel and it's hard to be nice? It was easy to... It, look, when you say badness, it's what level of badness. You don't take it. A man will say, oh, you're not a killer, you're this, you're that. No, I'm not about taking the life. Do not take a life because I believe the day you take a life, you just shot the years. I've proven it. Have you, have, you ta have you taken anybody's life before? Never. I never conspired to take a life. Is that if, if, listen, if it's me alone, the world overpopulated long time. My mother and father couldn't have died either. Now my sister, now my brother. Them could have died. Okay. Ninja Man said something one time. And I don't know if you all... You know Ninja Man? Personally. Ninja Man the artist. <laughs> I remember one day I was in the market in Ochi, selling with his mom. And he came there. And when he came there, this is how I got his attention. Ninja me, ninja me, rougher than I'm a star DJ. Cause me know him tune them so me and him. Ma, ma, so ma, as ma, soon as he hear that, and now. as soon as he hear him spin around, I'm gonna get five thousand dollars in my pocket. Straight away, just, just like that. Just like that. Him just call me one side and pop five grand and give me. It was the five thousand dollar bill. Him count out the thousand of them, the manly them, and say, so, "Hold this, my yo." I wear my service. You say, me, and, me and your mother they are so going easy. And thing, ninja man. And for so what happened to Ninja Man and when Ninja Man go down and the journey where him take. I mean, he still never did all take that with Ninja Man. I mean, know him. Ninja Man have to be Ninja Man. Ninja Man have responsible for him. Me still have responsible for me. Me, I feel responsible for me and who the near me. So if me can give you some good doctrine, I give you some good ideas, I tell you to do this, I do that. No, my brother, no do that. I read that is where me fit in. So everybody have me as a, I remember when I was in primary school. As rude as we was, they used to call me Goody. Oh, I got the name. They had a little comb. I look a black comb. And the name of the black comb was Goody. And I always had that comb. Well, I can't understand how badness we or you take up badness when you have so much things going for no, you. It's not taking it up. It's not taking it up. I can tell you straight, it's not taking it up. It's living into it, growing this, into this it, born is into in it. You. It's when you put it out there. Okay. Some youths have to exert it all the time because if them don't exert it, then don't eat. Okay. And if them don't eat, then probably don't have a statue. So this have to, it have to be 24 sevens with them in order for them to survive. Then it entraps them. Because who you become, you're going to have to just live this life. There is no other life. This is who people have your ass. This is who them take your ass. This is who them wear in your ass. So when you try to get out of like that, like that life, though, I wasn't in it. Okay. That's what I'm trying to tell you. I was smart with it. Yes, okay. me and the bad man are friend, but you don't see me and the bad man are step. I wonder if you understand what I'm saying. Yes, I understand 100%. Me know what the bad man are do. Me know what the bad man are like him things. But you're not involved me in Me know it. who the bad man ray, 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 with. 
But that are not my business because me and the bad man don't do that. Me and the bad man probably depend on some racist thing. Or me and him might depend on some hustling thing, something different what the bad man have to come to me for. The bad man have to come to me probably for link a little man for him if me I go fly up for a little vacation and thing and you know. And a man can give me a little package and say, yeah man, because I can link him to Brooklyn or New York and my can go to Florida. You know, here Jamaica back in the days, because oh, I got the job in here Jamaica, I still didn't tell you, you know. I got the job with BW, you know. I end up getting the job. When I did the interview, I got the job. Eight people were there. Yeah, eight people were there. They all did their interviews. <laughs> and when I went in there, I remember when the manager said to me, this is you? I remember he asked me that question when I was finished. And I said, yes. And he said to me, he asked me a ticketing question, and it was the easiest question. I just finished the course. I did intermediate ticketing and all of that. You can look at a ticket, a passenger ticket. There is so many information on a passenger ticket. <laughs> I'm laughing. And this was my word. From the ticket number to the issuance, to the name, to the, the baggage, the seat, the, the, the itinerary, all that. Me, me, me have that lock. And when I broke it down to them, they said they were going to get to me in 48 hours, which was a lie. They got to me in 24 hours. Okay, they got to you sooner rather than later and then. Said, and said the job was mine. Okay. So now I had to go to my manager and give her a resignation. This was 91. Giving her a resignation. At the time, she couldn't, I couldn't resign. I couldn't leave. Oh, oh you going to leave a job. You just turned 20 years old. And I'm resigning from a, 20 a job old. in here, Jamaica. But I'm getting a better job. I'm getting a job that pays me more. Here, Jamaica probably might You're be very fortunate to, then. Oh, Lord have mercy. Here, Jamaica, being born, born here, I'm getting this opportunity Big. every day me there work. Even if I have to wear the same pants for five days, I come home and wash that and press that and you think it's a different pants I go out the next day. That's ambitious. Though. Yes, I have to go. People used to talk about it. So what is when you go up and down the street and we see you? Some girls don't really look at me because I'm someone I look at them because me don't want them. What is some you been in prison before? You never. Been, you've never been in prison. But when I'm in prison in my place. You've been in jail? Well, got locked up. You got locked up. But not in prison. Okay, have you ever been locked up in jail abroad? Well, get locked up and come out. Okay. And, and, and it's for being where I wasn't supposed to be. All right. Tell me the, um, the, the, the living situations in the prison and the jail abroad that well, you go to. Look, when you get knocked, it, it, it's way better than here. No? If you don't watch the physicalness and who you're living with, you, you have to understand say, you're in their world. That's the first thing. You're not in Jamaica. But honestly, i rather get locked up in their world than get locked up in my world. Because I consider myself safer than imagining what my world is like. All I do is hear about why I'm in the, behind the walls here in GP, Spanish Town, and no horizon. Would you rather to live abroad than to live in Jamaica? Honestly. Yes, please. Honestly, to be honest with you, I want to live in Jamaica. But in order to live in Jamaica, I have to have some residential ship in America, or Canada, or England, some first world country, or somewhere different from Jamaica. It probably could be Barbados, it could be Cayman, it could be, it could be Antigua, it could be Trinidad. But being in here and doing the best that I know I can do, no, I don't believe it can get done. Okay. Uh, um, you, you said a minute ago yeah, um, that if you live to see 30 years old, in, in trench town, you've lived your life. I said this. I said this because it hurts. I remember in 2007, a little guy that I killed was killed. So you've killed someone before? No, a little guy that I grew. Okay. I said, a little guy that I grew. What did I say? I said a little guy that I, I, I killed. killed. Yes. No, I didn't kill him. Sorry, my mistake. I grew up with him. Okay. I practically raised him. Okay. But. He didn't see me for a little bit. But then when I see him again, he had eventually did England, he did overseas and everything, and he came here. He ended up getting killed. And I said to myself, what really happened? Where did the transition go? I just had him right here. I, I, I was like, it's God. Not meaning it's God. He looked up to yeah, me to that yeah. extent where I blame myself for him to get away. Yes. His brother, that's two years younger than me, is my best friend. He's in England. And he was in England when he was getting killed here. And believe you me. That must have affected you really emotionally bad. Oh, man. Oh, man. I tell you. It's like I feel him. 
and he got killed because he wouldn't listen. And to be honest with you, once again, he was, he was into the badness again. As no, well. no, yes, he portrayed badness, but he wasn't bad. Okay, I can say that straight. He was not bad, but he did bad things. He just did bad things, and it succumbed him because who suffered complained, and in compliance. You, you, you know how it goes as far as the, the, the police system here. We don't even want to talk about that. You understand me? He got killed. And when I thought I saved him, because he was, he was in a transition to leave, and I wanted him to leave, for him to be safe, he had to leave. Leave. Because I'd rather you leave and you're safe than being here and, and die. getting die and Passed killed. Away. Yeah. So in, so in the trench stand area, on a scale of 10, how much you, how much, how much use would you say survive to see 30 years old? How many? On a, on a scale of 10 in trench On a trench scale down. of 10? To be honest with you, you know, if you do a census right now, the gap between 30, if you do a census, the gap between age 30 years old, I'll be 50 the end of the month. You check the gap and see that nobody lies right in here. I'm talking about 31, 30. You, well, you can count them. And we probably can count them on, on both hands. Within the population. May I tell you, say, a guy who is 31 years old to 49 years old. Go around and check it. And see how much you get. Okay. Honestly. What, what, age, what age did you commit your first offence? Who, me? Yes, your very first offence. You can't remember that far back. How far back? And it wasn't even a first offence, honestly. The first got, crime that you I did. I got caught with some... It was weed possession. Weed. Weed. Did you, did you get locked up for that? 1994 in Camden. Okay. New yeah. Jersey. And how, oh, okay, okay. So you was in jail in, in New Jersey also? Yes. I, I did 10 days and came out. Got bail. Okay, so you was unfortunately been to jail in Jersey, jail in England. Have you no, been to jail? No, no, I never been to jail in England. I got locked up again, but this time it was for a gun possession because it, if you're in America and you don't sport a gun, whether it be your gun, or it's illegal. I can tell everybody this. It's the Constitution of America to bear arms. But they want it to bear arms legally. Sometimes you have to bear it illegally. If you get catch, you know you have an illegal possession of a firearm. But where I was, even that, even that charge, as long as when them check the ballistics and whatsoever and rare, it is clean, you get a tap on the risk. Okay. I remember I paid $110 for the bill and I didn't have to go back to court. And that's for the weed? And the, the, yeah, the weed and the gun. Okay. And how I got caught up in the weed and the gun. That's all you got just for a gun? <laughs> I'm telling you. And I'm telling you okay. this straight. Wait, wait. Say, say, say that one more time. What, did you, what, what, what was uh, your... Um... Hundred and my, my charge was possession of weed and um, they, they, like they would say, possession of a Control substance or something like that, the yes. charge read. An illegal possession of firearm, can I, you know, a firearm in the streets of Philadelphia, blah, 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 whatever the charge was. $110. $110. Was my bail. I didn't even spend everything. two years in jail. If you, got, if you had that charge in Jamaica. A crazy charge, that man. Number one, you get, get rid of a gun in Jamaica, they're going to kill it. That was number one. So I don't understand the decision or who people do certain things. The police if, would kill you or the bad man would kill you? Look. The police probably kill people for guns that they heard they have. Okay. So if you will let somebody see you with a gun, that will tell a police what you just did to yourself. You just, you just killed yourself. Hmm? If somebody, you don't know who like you, who is with you and who is Ray. Remember at one stage we didn't have telephones. I remember I said this to somebody. Say, you realize what's going on? 1997, 1998. I remember I was sending phones to Jamaica. There was a phones and, you know, there was a war. I'm talking about the same civil war right here within communities and so forth. Rima war, Tivoli war. Probably there was war in jungle. Everywhere you go, there is a beef and a war. They call it war. It's not really a war. It's, it's, it's civil unrest amongst so-called residents. It's a Jamaican thing, there's everything. It's a, see, people don't understand. Not being a first world country mean we don't have set laws. The system is not set the way it should be set. Because so, it's a first world country. Yes, so here it is. 
when I got exposed to America. You, 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 look, it's not about the laws here or the, the prettiness or the gallow and everything. But to believe me, even when you get arrested and how they deal with it, you, 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 you impress. You wish your country had a system, a controlled system, where things wouldn't get out of order. Come it, on, man. I see the problem which seems that it can't be solved. Then if I am 50 years old and it was happening before and it had happened again, then I came to one conclusion, you know. I don't want my kids here. You know? Because if anything should draw me out, it's you hurting my child. So you don't want, you want all your kids growing up in Jamaica? I don't want my kids to grow here and have been successful so far. Are you, are you afraid that are you afraid I that any child you, in Jamaica right now? She are you afraid that the school. life that you may have lived may back may fall back on them? No, it's not the life that I live. If that was the point, she would be okay. okay. It's the life she's gonna live no. when I'm not around when her. You're not around. Okay, I'm okay. close to her. All right. And the danger that she would be in is Ma, her mom and I separate. Okay. It's the life she's gonna live. Probably around her stepfather. Okay. You understand how I deal with? Yes. It's the life she's gonna live probably around her stepfather. Because me don't want it got today. Here it is now, you ask me if me ever kill. Me never kill. Mm -hmm. I'm only scared to tell you because me know it's a kill. Let's go up on TV and tell us that them kill. You wasn't prosecuted for it. You never get charged for it. Nobody so, never know. So you talk freely. Just, so you can talk freely, talk yes. freely. Yes. I never killed. I'm not a killer. Don't believe in killing. You understand? I respect you for that as well because a lot of people seem to, 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 be, seem to talk and say that they don't the kill like to boost themselves. What you're killing for? Where you kill? If you want to take the time with this that you want to destroy, for help it, you'd be surprised what this would have come out to. Because if you're going to kill it, that means it's it, it worse than a it. You don't kill something where you love, something where you respect, something. You, 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 you hate this. You don't want to see this. So you kill it. Anything you love, you look after. Anything you love, you look after. You take okay. care of me. Don't necessarily have to know you. Um, it's, it, there's... there's it's a fact that there's like 2.9 to 3 million in the population in Jamaica. When I used to go to school, geography is one of my subjects. The population was almost 4 million. I could swear the population was 4 million. How many, how many years in ago was geography, that? In geography, in 1982, 83, 84, going at Woolmans, I think the population, if I go back to my geography in diagrams, I still remember my textbooks. I think the population was 3.5 million. What happened? Because now it's probably 2.5. So what happened? That, that, I want to know what happened. That was what I was going to say because you, you basically... You want me to answer the question? It's, okay, it's 3 million now. The, 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 the total now um, in population in Jamaica is 2.9 to 3 million. All However, right. a thousand, at least a thousand deaths per year. All right, listen. And you just answer one of the questions. The deaths have increased. Technology is, uh, has increased, so it's easy to kill a person. I remember I said to myself... They're giving Jamaicans telephones? Are they giving Jamaicans telephones? You know what a telephone can do? Do you know what a telephone can do? They can do many things, many they, things. They, listen, so the, 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 what you call it, the, 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 the murder rate must increase. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. I, I, I don't know if you realize, but I realize. In 1990, we never have so many mugs. And you'd be surprised what people are using as mugs. Dead oaks. I can't tell you we are a sour one. I probably would be telling on their existence. Mm -hmm. But where that dead house is, it don't even have a sign. No sign at all. I just happened to go there. To get, um, what you call it? I was getting um, from a JP. A JP to stamp a paper and sign a paper. I was looking at a job. Okay. Getting a job. And in order to get to this man, I remember when I got to him, he said, drive with me, man. I'm going somewhere. And when me and this man drive where I'm going, I shut up, pull up. I mean, I wonder where this man I go with me with a shut up. But I trust him. Because him know me, I want to, you know, better heads. It's just a stamp and a signature me come for. And when we drive through the shutter and go in, and I see the shutter drive down behind me. Now me get suspicious. Come here, I wonder why the shutter drive don't um, jar down behind me. So I said, where am I going? You're going to see it. And when I look, when I come, come, me make sure me come out of the car. Now. 
Because if I kill them, I go kill me. Them not kill me in the car. How the population come down to two million and change? If it's even three million, I'm saying, then where did a million people go? I'm going to try to answer the question myself. Migration. Deaths. Because my mother that had nine kids, you don't find a girl have nine children again. Do you feel that like most of the deaths in Jamaica, though, is contributed um, due to badness? The whole Jamaica is in it now. Every week. I was surprised when I heard that Montego Bay. Imagine. But what do you think happened? I also did the metaphysics on this also. Listen to the metaphysics on this now. Coronation Market. How many body areas? How many body areas they have around coronation market? Because here it is, it's a market. Coronation market is a market. What goes in the market? What happens in the marketing? So food. marketing. Okay, yeah, fair enough. Marketing involves money. Yes. Money is power. Power is respect. So anywhere where there is marketing, so to speak. There will exist criminals, as you call them. Because crime, criminal come from the word crime. He's a criminal because he commits a crime. You know, simple English. Mm. The dictionary will tell you that. And to all the children out there, pick up the dictionary and the thesaurus, no? Pick up the thesaurus and the dictionary, including my own, and learn. When you do have nothing for do, just read. Learn the meaning of certain things and know certain things. Because knowledge as I know, it's power. is evaluation. Eval it don't devalue, it evaluates you. If there's such a word. It's not about D, it's value. You need it. Even when you don't earn, even when you don't get because of your education, having it and sharing it give you at peace. Because I need to. Let me tell you something. In my life right now, right about now, my children in America and grandchildren are planning to see me and know their father, biological father, because you don't know who they are because they don't have my last name. But I'm their, I'm their father and I stay in touch with them. I stay in touch with a couple of the mothers too. My children that were born in Jamaica are established, except for one, my last one. She's 10 years old, 11 years old. And she look like she going to give me the most problem. You understand? Them say I spoil the kid. But I believe a father should spoil him child. Especially a daughter and stay around her and make sure know the most and make sure see him. You know, it give her a different perspective on life and on men. You understand me? Okay. Yeah. Uh, Otis, having a gun is power, right? Yeah. Okay. Having knowledge is also power. Yes. Can you play, explain, if you, follow, if you follow up the gun, it's going to end in one way and if you follow up the knowledge, it's going to end in another. In another. Can you please explain to the youth which one of the powers is the right one to take and <laughs> why? Right. Listen, listen, you're never born into a gun. You're never born, all right. If we went think about gun, it's to become a soldier. That was the thought. But here it is, guns are float and guns dropping a people on. And, and the youth, them have, because if this youth don't have any way out and him figure say him find out him can get this or him can get into that. This is the ways and means of how him eat. That's how serious it is when it comes to the liberty part, the eating part. Who went clothe him, where him going sleep. You know, him went get a little catty, a little girl or something whatsoever. I'm like a little life, yeah. You know, the little hangout thing, him no real response to anything. Him don't have no kids, him no have nothing. It is very accessible and easy, especially when a dollar come in. If you a little you pick up a gun. You understand me? But check the levels. All of who pick it up. All of who I deal with it. All right. If the worst don't happen, that you get killed or get wanted or end up behind the bars or you beat up your life or whatsoever, what happened? What really happened? Cartel. Cartel. Everybody use cartel as an example. You know? Cartel say intellect. Cartel say high school. Cartel. I remember the first time me a cartel. And I said to myself, you know, somebody want my daughter to listen to the brother. Oh, I'm so vulgar. Have you ever, have you ever met him? Ne yes. You've met him? Yes, I was going to say never. Okay. Right in a buckers. The very same guy when may I tell you about. We get killed when me grow. I'm yes. again saying name, Basco. 
brought Cartel here. Okay. And we meet Cartel, we got to know his manager and everything. Right here, sir, in a buckets. Right a boy stone right here, sir. Him know me. Him here burrow, he must say I said burrow because there's another burrow in. Carl Brown have a son named Burrow, but he's in England somewhere. Okay. You so it, so yeah. before he went to England, there was two Burrows in, in, in Trenchtown? Because England was my ground. No, no, I'm saying before he went there. Yeah. There was two Burrows in Trenchtown. Well, I wasn't here. Okay. So he, they call him Burrow too. Oh, okay, <laughs> okay. Understand? I understand. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Tell me something, um, please, Otis. Yeah. Why did you want the interview to be taken inside and not in the outside where, where you live? Well... First of all, in the ghetto area. Remember that I ran into the dude and dude said, Otis, are you for doing that interview here? Yeah? People want to hear what you have to say. Yeah? And I said to myself, where are we going to do it? And we, I went somewhere where I think was the peaceful and quietest place. You English farm, the artist. But when we go up there, we hear nice, don't it? Yes. And then I decided, I start use my head because my house, <laughs> even if we're inside of the house, I can hear nice. You just get used to that noise. The kids, the dogs, the, the bike. You, you, you will hear some sound. And the man said, peace. And me decide, say, the studio over my fifth street. My friends them run the studio. So I want to. I talk to my friends them. And we're going to line up this. And I could talk. Because even when you tell me 20 minutes worth of talk, I laugh. Well, the first thing I said to you, I said 20 minutes. I about 20 days worth of rap for you. No joke about it. I'm going to know some okay. friends of my life when they hear this. Uh, but one thing about my rap, real rap, real rap, it can be proven. The only way it can be proven is if who we are talking about is buried. Okay. So, all right. So, you, you've, left, you've left the badness alone now, Otis, right? I was never in badness. Okay. I knew about the badness. Okay. You knew it. Been around the badness. All the knowledge. Probably did badness. But I don't endorse badness. Okay. You might, it might be good enough for you to say I've learned. I've wisened over the years. Because I work. I was employed. I take care of my kids, you know. I have a family. I grew up in this. I remember I sat down and I wrote a song. That's the song you just heard. I wrote this song when my brother died in 2002. And I wasn't there to see him. Because I remember the first time I went to America, when I went in John F. Kennedy Airport, when I was going through the airport, it was snowing. I went up October. It, oh man, it was a blizzard at the airport. And when I came through that door and I saw his face, <laughs> I'll never forget Patrick Miller, my brother. And he came with a coat. The coat was like, ever you want to kill a talk about the trench, the trench coat. The yes. full leather. Yeah, man, yeah, man. The feather leather. Yeah, man. I'll never forget that coat. I remember bringing the coat back to Jamaica. I love the coat so much. And it's of no good to me here because if I put it up, I can burn up. It will be about 300 degrees underneath. Okay. To, to tip the coat was and square shoulders and everything could meet me at the airport. He's the brother may I tell you about. The same brother called me at Air Jamaica. He's in the Bronx. And he called me and said to me, say, Otis, what you doing? So, what are you doing this weekend? I said, nothing. I said, you know, say, my friends I'm have a little damn you know, basement party I go on. But I really have a partner. You know. Come up. Right okay. there off White Plains Road. Okay. My sister used to live at 216. She lives somewhere in, well, I don't know. Well, yeah, I think she still lives in New York. And he used to live down by Burke. By Burke and Holland. My brother used to, I remember the Burke, Burke station stop off White Plains Road. Burke, I used to come off the train station and I walk go up by Alan and go to his block. But I always used to look at his building and say, oh, me, I'm not living here. For the simple fact that it was a one way in, one way out. But it was 1800 US a month. I wonder why he stayed here. You I never liked New York because of the bills. It was too much. That's how I ended up in Philly and New Jersey. Because you probably could pay 500 US, or 600 US a month and get somewhere nice, real nice. And so it would be on the low. It wouldn't be in the building. You're so used to the building right here. You yeah, try to get away from the building. Okay. The building is a system thing. Yes. You, you can't do anything in the building. There ain't no escape. It's one way in or you jump through the window. 
So, so you're in the music industry now. Well, you're I'm dealing not, with music. I'm not in the music industry as you're much as music. I have the potential to do it. I'm just around the people that they are more into it. You English is into it. You see the little guy right here around the studio, he's into it. There goes Alt 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 that's Alton Ellis son, you know? Okay. Right here, you know? two of them outside, you know? and they are artists. You they, are, they are already into it, and these are the company I keep. I try to surround myself with these people. Positive people. Uh, okay, I understand that because I yes. understand earlier on you're saying if you if you was younger you'd want to do the the interview outside uh, um, in front of anybody and everybody. But now that you're older, you're doing your constructive things. You want it inside here in the plane, the surrounding where you're doing your positive exactly. things. Exactly. Because look, the people when look around, they're going to see where I'm at. They're like, what am I doing in the studio? I'm an artist. Yes, I'm an artist. That's not just established. I can't put it that way. You didn't want to be interviewed on because, the outside. Look, you want to be I probably don't have to sing. I can't write. Okay. Because that song where you just heard a while ago, I wrote it. You're an artist as well. <laughs> so I am an artist by writing because being a writer is an artist. It's where you play, it's where you pick up, it's where you come in. You see, I'm in a room with accomplished artists. Yeah. Everything that's around, everybody that's around you is positive Look, people. you're looking at Alton Ellis seed right there. Everybody around you is positive. You English, where we're coming from over the farm, that's his farm, is an artist. Everybody around you is positive. No everybody around me is positive, even the police. Positive. Because if you see a police come over there and it's with us, it's a positive police that. You know, I can say see a good police there. You're not welcome, no negative energy. No. I don't have the space for it. Okay. Because I wait, I got bring. I don't have the time for deal with that, brother. I don't have the energy for that. You're still a father. You're still a father figure. You're still a parent. People are look up to you for certain things. I have some friends out on the street where I expect certain things of me. Sometimes right. I go check them. Yes. Sometimes I run down to the point where them I have to go to. I call my friends and I have little friends overseas. I have like a whole man's family. You know? So, so tell, tell, me something, tell me something about this. How has life changed? Um, between the, your days and now 2021. A lot. Because I sat down in here, Jamaica, doing the same billings, accounting, and when I realized the dollar that was $5.50 for one in 1989, this is history. I sat down in 1991 and see that the dollar was now 22. It has quadrupled in devaluation. Okay. And when I saw that, you know what I said to myself? It's time to go to leave this country. Honestly, I'm telling you that. I'm surprised I'm still here. Because you, at you that time, I tell myself, me and my children, I had only had one daughter at the time. One of my sons died in 1992, stillbirth, and my other two kids was born in 93. So that was the my first four time. kids before I end up and got this child in 2010, October. You know God, God rest them so. And my whole thing is, my whole thing is positive. You have a positive. Me have positive friends. Me like the positiveness. Me in my area, I see what I go on. I see the problem, but me alone can't change it. Sometimes it needs finance to change it. Okay. You understand me? Yeah, I understand 100%, yes. yes. Tell me something, right? You see, as I've grown up, and from me and friends and my own experience, I've learned something from talking to a lot of people that's been involved in badness or yeah. being around people with badness and they've come to this downfall. There's, a four there's four words that I find are so powerful that I find on the lips of many individuals. Which word? I'm going to ask you them now to see if at any time, on what age did it come to you? Those four words are, if I did know. Do you understand me? Yes. And if I'm I didn't know. And I'm thinking about it. Those words came to me, honestly. Those words came to me in 1997, just before my 26th birthday. What happened that day? What happened? Why that? I was in Philadelphia. And the night, it wasn't really a good week, you know, because. Who claimed they were my friends? We had a little argument over something that we're not supposed to have an argument over. But it was on a mental level, they didn't really understand what level I was on. And even if they did, they were deciding now to use arrogance 
over intelligence. And I'm saying to myself, what's wrong with them? Because I can be arrogant also. You understand me? Yes. And they made at me, but they failed. When I say made at me, I deceived them into thinking I was somewhere else by not having my car there. Because you have it that I going go around that girl's house, so my car is supposed to be right there. But I left my car somewhere else. So you tricked them? Didn't, yeah. Okay. And I told the girl, if Jesus Christ came for me tonight, I am not here. This is where I'm staying. So I spent my birthday with her and everything, woke up the morning. And she woke up the morning to tell me that when I fell asleep, when the doorbell rang, you know, she jumped up, she went downstairs. It was my three homies. They died. They all dead. They all dead. They came there looking for me. Even though they didn't see my car out there. Your own friends? My own friends. I was with them. Me and them were doing, we were in business. And it's them that you grew up with? I grew up with them right here. And they came back to try and kill you? And listen to me. I went back for them. And when I went, I caught them sleeping. Honestly. One person was there. But two were sleeping. I left a note. I moved out. You leave a note? I leave a note. I just took the, the straps and took out the what you call straps? ammunition and Explain everything. The straps. The straps, man. The, the guns. guns they, okay. they, they, were, they were close to their guns. They fell asleep on the guns right here. So when I, when I sneak. So they must so sleep with gun next they, to them? They must sleep with gun next to are them. These, are these bad people? You, you, you understand? So my so people are asleep and, and they have gone next gun. to them? And I came in and take up the gun and look at them and walk past them. That's why I'm telling somebody, I'm not a killer. Two of them. And after I disarm them, they're still sleeping. And I could call my girlfriend and tell her, get a you all, I'm moving out. They'll never know where I'm going. And I left and they didn't know. And I left everything and I didn't leave with anything for them. I even end up giving away my own liberty to them. I said, go ahead and have it if that's what you're going, you're going to kill me for. You know, and, and I left. Okay. The, all right. See, from, what, uh, from growing up, I find that... 26 years oh. old. Okay. I was 26. When I was young, say about 15 years old, I had about 15, 20 friends. Yes. As I grow older, it, um, each by year, every five, ten years, I find that slowly but surely, every single one departs. Yes. A goes to B, B is going to C. In the end, I come down to me, myself, and I. Yes, yes. So you start off with a lot of friends, but then you end up by yourself. By yourself. So how much friends did you start off with, and how much is alive now? A whole around? bunch. A whole bunch. And if I go and talk about the friends that I grew up with here, I'm keeping it real with you. If they're not overseas, they're dead. The friends that you grew up with? The friends I grew up with. Most of my friends now. Roughly how much would you say that is? Oh, man, I couldn't count. I can't count. I've been getting hurt since I was like 11 years old. And this is 1982. Long time. This is 1982. My best friend died right in front years, of my face. Four, died in my years, hands right there at Boy Stone Gate. It's about 39, 40 years yeah. ago. Yeah. Okay. He got right in front of my face. He got killed in the street. I was 11. I didn't understand. I didn't eat for two weeks. That must have really confused you. I, I was getting ready to go to Woolmans. I just passed to go to Woolmans. I went to start Woolmans this way. So it, it wasn't easy. I still cherish the memories. I still cherish my friends. A lot of time I wish they were here. But they're gone because of what they chose to do. They chose the wrong path. You know what I mean? And you're so here. A lot of time I look at myself in the mirror and I say, oh, is it I'm not dead? It's not the looks. It's what I did. Right. And, and the part that was probably ordained for me. All right, tell me this, Otis, right? Because I'm used to watching this right now and they're thinking to myself, thinking to himself, I like to hear everything that I've listened to, I've heard what this young man have said. But right now, me not on a money pan road, mm -hmm. me there a prison, and nobody now look out for me. So when I go on road, all me I look for the right now is just rob and kill people in order to get back on my feet. And, what would you say to those individuals? And that is foolishness, because listen to me, right now, I, I, a couple, I think it was a week ago I spoke to a person who is on his way out, who did life right here in GP for something that he didn't do. And he did I knew life he, in prison? Life. He did, he did his 25 or 26 or 27 already. He's coming out. And he did not do the crime. And he did not do the crime. And I'm here telling you, he did not do it. And what is he doing now with himself? And he's coming out. He's coming home. He's getting ready to come home. But if he was here and wasn't there, I guarantee he'd have been dead. If he wasn't away. I'm telling you. Okay. All right. I do have to say who he is. He knows himself and he knows me. 
tell me something about this. How many put on this badness? May I have two, three, four men who want to kill me because me involved in this drugs thing with them before. That is where you get can't caught get out up. That is where you Talk get caught me. up. Give me the advice. How many get out of This out. is where you get caught up because who want to kill you, want to kill you for life. Who want to kill you, no care where them see you and how them see you. You see the incident last week in the plaza. Explain, explain. Tell me about it. The guy running business. The guy having business around and everything and him probably pull up. The, the, I don't know what he was doing. If he was eating or whatsoever, a gunman pop up on him and kill him. Just like that. And this man run a loan bureau and a loan agency and them go and label him. I don't even hear the news. I don't even want to hear it. Okay. He was born and raised right down there at First Street, right down Culture Yard. He no, he's gone. Like now he's gone just his like that. His birthday is coming up Sunday. And he's not here to celebrate. So see, you're interviewing me, and things still happening. And probably if you, you when you pack up your cameras, them and leave, it, it, it goes on. Things still be happening. And if you hear pop, pop, pop in other place, the first thing people think about is death. Death. Yeah. It's crazy. Now people are run to death with their cameras. You know, it's crazy. Otis, you see right now, I am really appreciate the fact that I've met you. I'm sit down here and hear the words of what you yeah. have to say because it's kind of like inspired me as well. But what I would like you to do, to do for if I'm the interviewer and you're inspiring me, yeah. okay, what, the individuals that are watching this right now, yeah. I'd like you to inspire them the same way. Yeah. I need you to give them an advice, please, and let them know to keep themselves quiet, stay out of trouble, and why is it important? Life is Talk the greatest. Talk to the youth then, please. Life is the greatest. And I know that most of you that are in league are doing what you're doing. Sometimes it's a family thing. Don't tell me it's a friend thing, but sometimes it's a family thing because sometimes you get caught up in the family hierarchy. It might be a brother, it might be your uncle. Me and you know it is right now. It's a family war and a friend war and a mother war. They don't care who it is. Once they get somebody for you, them going to damage them too. So here it is now, watch it now. You're not going to this and do it for yourself unless he's a loner. Because if you have a family, brother, how, how, how can you be thinking that if you do something and your consequences are going to make your mother dead or your father dead? You have to leave it. You have to leave it alone. For, the, for their sake. And the way the more you have to think. Look now. Better, my mother used to say, look now. I better people have something good for say about you. That's something bad. That's something bad. I'm going to prove it. Because the bad part of it, you know, when people start wash them out for you, you know. You remember what mama said, oh, them wash them out for me. It's a good thing, but still there, you can't know, look up in a burro face and hear what burro said. No phone out, that's a know me. No phone out, that's a go around me. I don't know a burro by heart. But here it is at the very same burro now, for end up in a GP. You understand me? After me, go through the court system and a judge who don't know me, go and tell me it's a me for the life. I don't know, no say I'm a burro that. We get burro to that. So I try to steal myself away or put myself away. If me even have to lock myself in my house, brother, watch some TV or something. Prevention better than the cure. The COVID come in, you know, and although the COVID is a bad thing, you know, yeah, here it is now, you know, the COVID thing, because of the regulations and what's going on, good things are happening. Because now people are finding family again. You understand me, I say? Man have time now for seeing baby. Look after this, look after that, him all the exercise. He might take care of him, health. You understand me? Health is on the rise. Health consciousness. Because nobody no one dead. Then if me no one dead, what me want to do in a lock up round beer, man? No make no sense. That no make no sense either. I better me out yourself go and bang at 12 hours every day. And I stay with the woman then. Yes, with the little woman them and me and them go and lay lay. Free can see the kids them and everything. Yeah, we eat little rare rare. When we see the little youth, then we can buy them two little cheese chicks and things. That's the happiness of life, my and friend, because the whole of we have got dead. Don't tell me that we have got dead anyway. And a sour one and dead. Man, I come like seven, eight shot in your head for what? A foolishness. The grung, I become a blood grung. And it was a sore. It's not good for we youths them. Where you see the youths of my group now and I do certain things that we're them exposed to. We need to forget where certain things out of the exposure so that we can come back with a healthy mind. And that we are dealing with bridging. And that we're telling you. I'm going to have a part two. Now watch your face. Okay. We're not going to hear more. A whole heap of things I have to tell you. You don't hear that? Okay. Yeah. Otis, thank you very, very, very yeah, much man. for this interview. Yeah. Thank you for your time Trench and effort. Down.
Thank you very Trench much. Down. And I hope this, there's going to be Progress. a second interview as well. Yeah. Okay, thank yeah, you man. very, very much. This yeah. interview, once again, Progress. is taken live from Trenchtown on yeah. the legendary grounds of Bob yeah. Marley, live for Black U TV, promoting the unity yeah, in the community. Thank you very much. Jump off of it. will see that. Me, my boy, I don't tell you. Yo, 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 I'm looking at me. Yeah? Yo, I'm looking at me. Why may I tell you? Next time, take a better, you know?